Hey guys, this is Tom at VSE, and we got a new product announcement for the LM2 and the LZ0 equipped trucks, and that is a integrated catch can. This integrated catch can is going to solve a problem that we're going to walk through here really quick to show everybody the issues that we've seen on our LM2 and our LZ0 through testing and through the lives of these trucks. Uh, it's something that people have asked us quite a little bit about, but we didn't know if we wanted to make something unless we knew that it actually would solve a problem. So I'm going to show you guys uh, how the CCV system works on the LM2 uh, here that we have disassembled, as well as the problems that the CCV system causes with the heat exchanger, which we have taken apart right here, and how it works with the turbocharger. So I'll show you um, in stock format how they work. They work. So this is our LM2. And what you see right here, we have the heat exchanger taken off of it. And the CCV is inducted into the inlet of the turbocharger right here. The CCV comes from the crankcase. There's the vacuum switch that's being monitored. And the turbocharger and crankcase pressure induce CCV right into the inlet of the turbo. And the problem is that this oil and water vapor, which we'll get into in a moment, gets induced into the turbo inlet and then pushed through the heat exchanger. And the heat exchanger filters the... Um, oil and water out and then it just coats the heat exchanger which we'll show you and what happens is it coats the inside of these pipes so that's the turbocharger outlet and this is the heat exchanger outlet and you can see these are just coated this truck has about 30,000 miles of runtime on it and I'll show you what this heat exchanger looks like after that uh, time so this heat exchanger we pulled off of this LM2 with, like I said, it's about 30, a little over 30,000 miles on it. And this is the inside of the heat exchanger. That, that would be the inlet. And if you see those fins in there are completely covered. And the issue with these fins being completely covered, this heat exchanger can get pretty hot and it will bake the oil right onto the fins of this heat exchanger and then it'll reduce its efficiency. And if you can see, the outlet has still a little bit of oil residue, but the outlet fins are clean, which means that this heat exchanger is holding a ton of oil. So like I said, we just pulled this heat exchanger off, and I'm going to dump the oil out of it and show everybody kind of what's in, in, inside these. So we have a, just an empty bucket here, and we've never dumped anything out. There might be a little bit of coolant, but this would be some of the oil that we see sitting inside these these heat exchangers and you'll see it start running out and we could probably let this drain for quite a little while because it's got to go through all these fins to get all the way into the system and it's just it's gonna it's gonna be probably 16 ounces or more of oil that's just gonna come out of here and this is never going to get better, especially as the trucks get older and they increase in blow by. Uh, this heat exchanger will get completely full of oil eventually, and it'll lower its efficiency, which lowers fuel economy, makes a turbocharger harder to push um, airflow through this heat exchanger. So that's that's a problem. Um, so what we invented was just a, a simple solution. So this is our uh, catch can, has a sight glass on the side of it, has an integrated drain valve. And then with a little connection to hold the drain hose. So when it's time to drain this thing, uh, you would just tip it down to the ground. This catch can I had on my LZ0 here for about a thousand miles of testing. So I'm going to take this. I have no idea how much is in this, but I'm going to spin the lid off this thing. I'm going to show you guys what's in it. If I take this lid off, you'll see this side of the catch can, this is the, the clean side, and this is the side right here coming from the crankcase. You'll see how it's quite a bit different in, in the level of dirtiness. Um, so I'm going to dump this out into this container just so everybody could see. Like I said, this has about a thousand miles on it. 
and there's going to be oil and water in this most likely. Uh, we, like I said, we've done, and this is, there's oil and water. That's why it looks milky. And that's just a thousand miles of catching oil. And um, the reason that there's water in this, and I, I know that that's an odd thing, like why the heck would there be water in this oil? Um, so when CCV goes into the inlet of this catch can and it, the oil gets plated out into the bottom of this and then the return flow goes in the inlet of the turbocharger, something, something unique actually happens um, in this turbocharger. So this, the crankcase comes in right here, crankcase vapor, that's how it traditionally would, would go. And the turbocharger spinning and it pulls a little bit of a vacuum up inside here, there's a hole and when the turbocharger is pulling airflow across here, uh, this tube, it's pulling vacuum from the crankcase and inducing into the turbo, which then pushes into the motor. And what happens is the dew point here, uh, so the dew point is much lower than the dew point here, and it condenses. And this condensed water we're trying to extract and put into this catch can and not into the heat exchanger, which ultimately goes back into the intake manifold, which could get by the rings of the motor and end up in the oil. Um, so the, the oil on these things gets dirty pretty quick. You know, the oil gets pretty warm. So just keep in mind that we're keeping oil and um, water vapor out of the crankcase or out of the combustion chambers. So that's the way this catch can uh, is designed. So I'm gonna show you a clean one so everybody can kind of see what we've done inside here. Uh, Cause this took a little bit of thought although it's just a simple item, it took some thought. Um, these uh, trucks have a crankcase pressure vacuum switch in them, and they can set pretty easily a code P04DB, and that is for crankcase ventilation system disconnected. For power stroke guys, they'll probably remember that. That is a problematic code. So on the top of this, and Brady, if you can just come over here, if you just think about this, here's the bottom, and it sits, at, sits here, we push crankcase vapor through one set of holes and then there's no baffling. Once this gets all the way full, the crankcase vapor has to come out the other side. And if this gets all the way full of oil, what'll happen is we can end up choking off the crankcase flow path back to the motor. Well, what we've realized is we need more than just that crankcase flow path. We need to just a little bit of a Venturi. And if you could see this right here, that Venturi cutout is actually critical. This keeps a safety net built in. So if the user isn't changing the, uh, and draining the, the catch can often enough, this little Venturi will allow crankcase vapor to flow across and not set this P04 dB code. So anyways, in the kit, you'll see that you get this lid bolts on here and this assembled unit, and then there's a drain valve. So installed in the truck, we'll show you on our LZ0 what it looks like. So on our LZ0, you'll see what we've actually done. This hose back here would have been routed right into the turbo inlet. And instead what we're doing is we're taking that hose and then we're extending it into the inlet of our catch can, which goes through those two baffles and then uh, the outflow goes right back into the turbo inlet because we do require the turbo to draw enough vacuum on the system uh, to keep not only the P04DB from uh, illuminating on the dash, which will set a check engine light, but it also keeps um, enough crankcase vacuum drawn so the seals on the motor are protected. And that's super important that we actually are pulling vacuum on the crankcase system uh, at like two to four inches of vacuum and that switch is monitored continuously, whether it be at full throttle or at idle conditions. So we are mimicking OEM vacuum conditions inside the CCV system with the use of this catch can and a Venturi between the two flow paths. So anyways, this, this catch can we just replaced really quick, but I'm gonna show you the hoses and kind of what they look like. So uh, this is the outlet hose, and this has been sitting here for a little bit. So there's been some little bit of residual, but if you can see, if I put this nice clean rag in here and stuff it kind of up in here, you'll see it, 
it retains pretty clean. So this is on the outflow side, and this is on the inlet. So this would be uh, what's coming from the crankcase. And if I take this towel and stick it in there, you'll see that it's the hose itself is dirty, and I haven't shoved this in there very far. In fact, if I go all the way up in there, my finger's dirty and the hose is dirty. So what we're doing is we're extracting the the dirt, debris, and the oil uh, from the CCV system, preventing it from getting into the turbo inlet. So we have built a ton of these turbochargers, and this is, like I said, we've introduced the world's first LM2 uh, turbocharger to the market. What we have noticed on a lot of these compressors that we've taken in as cores, the compressor side itself is super dirty. It's got a whole bunch of um, CCV built onto it, and if you guys know, this is the um, clean side EGR inlet. So the inlet to the EGR comes in right here. That's on the low pressure side. So you have EGR coming in here and it's moderately clean because it's downstream of the DPF. But when it gets combined with crankcase ventilation, that's got a lot of oil in, in it. You end up with kind of like a, a sticky mixture that ends up plating out on the front of this heat exchanger, which is literally um, not good. It's super hard to get this out. Um, for guys that end up putting uh, our catch can system on there, it will eventually bake the oil out if you drive it hard enough. But we recommend if you're gonna go in here and put this catch can on really quick, it takes like 20 minutes, pull the seat exchanger off, clean this thing out with brake and parts cleaner, let it dry it really, really, really well. Uh, let it air dry the best you can. Give it uh, several hours of dry time and then reassemble it, put it back on and um, you'll be good to go. So. Just some other things that we're going to just cover really quick. So what's included, we got clamps, we got hose, um, the O-rings are all integrated. The catch can will come as, uh, fully assembled like I showed you earlier. Uh, it'll have a barb connection, it'll have a drain valve, and it'll have a capped drain line. So it's really easy to drain this literally uh, on your oil changes. So every time you guys change your oil, literally stick a can or something down there. A beer can works really darn good. but put a beer can or something down there, drain the oil into the can, and then you're gonna have, like I said, on oil change, this shouldn't be quite up into the sight glass, uh, but it's gonna be close. So on the oil change interval, drain your drain your catch can. So that's all the stuff that's included. Um, if you guys are going to extended drain intervals, for guys that maybe have like a bypass system or something installed, we recommend you guys drain this before you get to 10,000 miles, or at least pop the hood, make sure that the sight glass isn't covered, and drain this system out. Like I said, we did, we did build in a little bit of safety margin above this, um, but realize you're relying on that Venturi across there uh, after that point. Uh, and then insulation, we all have instructions. Uh, this is all built aluminum, 6061, stainless steel screws. So everything is really bulletproof and it'll take you guys about 30 minutes to put uh, this catch can on. This hose and stuff will come uh, uh, cut to the correct length. So as far as like insulation goes, 30 minutes and you guys will be done. If you have any other questions about this kit or why we made it, or if you just want to call and chat about it before you uh, place an order, um, please give us a call. 1-833-789-7700. You can hit us up on Instagram, obviously Facebook. We always love to answer your guys' questions. And again, this is just one more product that we're bringing to the three liter market. We love these little motors and we're going to keep making stuff for you guys. That's all we got.